Let's make it do better. All right. Let's do better. Three, two, one. This <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, uh, we're sitting in your awesome rig, and we've known each other for a long time. You guys are hitting the road, yeah. um, but there's been a long road getting here. Um, what? Tell us a little bit about how you guys got started in this, why you do it, and then we're going to talk about this awesome rig that you guys have worked very hard on, and then we'll talk about where you guys are going. Yeah. So, yeah. Dude. Where, gee, I don't even know where to start. It's, yeah, us either. <laughs> This is, this is so, how it goes. It's been, it's been just over eight years yeah. since mm -hmm. we first hit the road. And we started out, we've been through a lot of different rigs over that time. We started out in an Airstream Argosy, like 1974 Airstream Argosy Airstream. Camper, not not Camper. a uh, not mm -hmm. a trailer. Like a, not, you actually drove it, it this Airstream. A, it was a driving bubble. It was like, dri it was like driving an astronaut's helmet. And uh, yeah, so that's what kind of got us started uh, right away, set the tone for the next eight years with the engine blowing. Right. <laughs> within the first few <laughs> weeks of being on the road. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but I mean, how do we get started? Yeah. It's, it's, that, that goes back a little bit further, right? Goes, yeah, it goes back a little bit further. Um, you know, we, it was a long time where I didn't want to go on road trips because of, you know, experiences I had overseas and, and there was some, you know, some other things going on there too. And, and Jessica was like, you know, Kind of, kind of just nudging, you know, not pushing, yeah. nudging like gently in her in her way, and we did this one trip around the West that was, uh, uh, you know, 5,200 miles, 5,200 miles from Atlanta to Wyoming down through Utah, and it was my first time, our first time really seeing the American West, and we were just blown away. I mean, we were yeah. just staggered by the things that we saw, the, the 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 landscapes and the and the mountains, and something that you know, something that really stuck out to me was how. It was one of the first times that I'd experienced a full night, being outside a full night in the dark, and the experience of hearing coyotes, of seeing millions, billions of stars, whatever, whatever however many, just an enormous number of stars. And the only other time I'd experienced anything like that was being overseas, you know, being mm -hmm. in Iraq and being in the desert. And the salience of that experience was very, very different to what this was. And it was just this awesome peace, just being out there in the space. And that's kind of what lit the flame, really, where we mm -hmm. were like, God, we want to we want to live on the road. But the thinking, you know, the thinking was very in that sort of stand, that sort of standard thinking or maybe the more traditional thinking that you work, you build up a retirement. When you build up your retirement, then you can buy the camper and then you'll just, you know, travel the country when you're 50, 60, whatever, however, yeah. however many and, years and old. I think right. We really wanted to do that younger. We knew that. Yeah. But we still feel like there were certain things we needed, certain check marks we needed to do, like paying off our student loans or um, being completely debt free and all these things before we could consider what that would look like for us. And one day I'm sitting at my computer, just I'm working on a logo, designing a logo and I get a tap on my shoulder and I'm, I got headphones on. I was like, what? I'm doing, I'm working over here. I'm working oh, yeah. here. I'm I working know, here. I know that headspace. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> And she says, hear me out, <laughs> chill out. What do you think about moving into a van when our lease is up here in three months? I'm like, what? What are you talking? How? What? We have to retire first. Like we have to check the right. boxes. And she says, no, 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 hear me out. You can do it. We can do it. Like we can travel and work from the road using a Wi-Fi hotspot. And, and literally all of our clients right now, they're all in Atlanta, New York City. We're mm -hmm. already working remote. All we have to do is just figure out how to do it on, from the road, and this is how we can do it. And oh, by the way, there's no rent. We have fewer cars. We have, all, we have way less expenses, which means that with the amount of money that we're earning right now, we can actually put all that money that we're using for rent and all this other nonsense. Yeah towards the student loans. And we were off to the races.
but you know we're we're in this and this is you know this is kind of a, a dream for mm-hmm. us right to be in something with the combination of things which we'll go into later yeah uh the, the, this combination of things is right for us and it is a dream for us but we started with a subaru outback that we traded straight up title for title for an old volkswagen van again yep. that's where we started from you know and we've sort of uh, and everything has been us work like where i mentioned we, we had our work and we were able to bring that on the road so everything is just kind of leapfrogging slowly up up from there and it's, right. it's kind of the think about it think about it this way you tend to your garden you know at your yeah. house or you tend to the garden of your of, of a middle class or, or upper class life you te- you're tending to that garden what does that look like you know you're making the slight upgrades to your house you're fixing the roof you're doing this and and you're trying to leave it better than you found it essentially mm-hmm. like I want to come home to something that means something to me and that's the same dynamic out here only applied to our rigs right right so we started here with a van again and then we moved to the Airstream Argosy and that thing blows up and the floor rots <laughs> out of it and and we're like oh this is definitely not gonna work so back to the van again we fix up the van again and it's and it's this dream vehicle we have some of the best experiences we've ever had in our life and then we get inspired by other travelers that we meet who've been traveling around the world and it just blows our mind that you can do this like this for real you're a family of four traveling in a defender around around africa Mm -hmm. and south america and you're working from the road and living in a rooftop tent come on man If (laughs) if they can do it if they can do it and if they can figure out what trade-offs to make surely we can try to figure this out so what does that look like and right. then we end up with you know the synchro because we're like we love the van again but we want four-wheel drive boy was that a freaking mistake <laughs> right but how much did we learn how much mm-hmm. did we learn mm-hmm. the road the road that we that we have taken and this is cliche as, as hell but the road that you take leads you to where you are yes right right and you have a choice and where that road's going to take you. You don't have a choice in like how it's going to meander, right? right. You right. never know. It's like what makes this so fun is you have a destination in mind, but it's never about the destination. And in terms of your vehicle, your platform, you guys have both said that that yellow mm-hmm. troopy was Yeah, I mean it was a good, good it was truck. bulletproof. It was really capable off-road mm-hmm. and it was just enough interior mm-hmm. living situation wise. Um Yeah. And we were we were excited and planning to take that around the world. Yeah. Right. Was, yeah. And then that didn't work because of, of all the random of all. <laughs> so, well, let me do a, let me do a yeah. quick disclaimer here. Yeah. And, and my quick disclaimer is, is, is y'all. There's another four hour episodic <laughs> piece about the journey that you've just taken with the last two vehicles that you guys have owned. Right. And it's been a real journey and so the troop the troopy did not work out for reasons um, that you guys can summarize reasons yeah yeah i mean summarize Um, it however you guys want to summarize it right sure i mean so we after traveling in it loving it determining that this was the rig for us yeah uh we were doing some we got back in the united states we had been traveling up in canada um and had gotten back to the united states we're planning on crossing the border into baja um in early january J- 2019 January 2019 yeah, yeah. and discovered or uh, in, in, it was actually late 2018 and then we got a oh, phone right. call yeah, 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 and yeah. it had been discovered that uh, that vehicle was illegal um, right. that it had been illegally imported correct yeah that the this is not verified this isn't you know but but all the evidence points to the fact that the people who build it in germany yeah you know cut the cut a new vin number out of it and welded yeah. in an old vin number yeah. to make it appear as if well it i'll, was, I'll yeah. say maltec okay i'll say maltec um <laughs> and and the reason this has nothing to do with you guys um i know lots of people that have done business with with maltec not 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 just you guys not you guys and uh if you're a customer i'm sorry and if you do business with Maltec, you're suspect. Uh, that there, it really has not been bad. They, they've they've really taken advantage of a lot of folks, and it's it's not it's not great. Um, so not to focus too much on that in this yeah. video, yeah. right? I mean, you guys have been through a, a journey with that, and yeah. you thought you had the perfect rig, and it wasn't even legal in the states. No, I mean it's not legal anywhere. It's do, not legal do, anywhere. Doing doing that to a yeah. truck is not legal anywhere yeah. on this yeah. planet. And so we discovered that, and there's a whole journey there of negotiations with them and trying to figure out what to do. Yeah. And at a certain point, they, we were just like, just give us our money back. 
And when that, when, when that, when we crossed that bridge, like, just give us our money back. They said, okay, we'll give you your money back. Two weeks pass and we don't hear anything. Yeah. And then we get a phone call. And, and, and essentially the owner of Maltec says, listen, what if we do this? You give us that troopy back. I'll put it on an 80 series chassis. Okay. Make it completely legal. You help me sell it in the United States for, for at least a certain amount of money. Right. Yeah. Okay. And in exchange for that, I will build you the a, truck, a that, replacement, a replacement truck, right. a truck to, that you need right, right. to make you whole, to yeah. make you whole. Yeah. And that, you had a good truck. Yes. A great truck. You had a good truck. Yeah. That troopy was like, <laughs> you, know, truck, was truck, yeah. you had a good truck, yeah. but, but for reasons you no longer have that truck. So yeah. the, the yeah. proposal was, Hey, let's make that right. Let's make that let's, right. Let's make yeah. that right. Four months became 18 months. I need more time. Fine. Okay. You guys assume, assuming noble intent. Assuming and that is, and that is what you do as a, as a human is you yeah. assume noble intent. You want to assume. Noble right. Intent. And yeah. I, and I really try hard not to be cynical. I really try hard <laughs> not to, not to impugn, uh, ulterior motives on the people. Like, because yeah. something, you know, I've talked about this with you numerous yeah. times. I've talked about this with a lot of people. The people that we meet on the road are what keep us out here. Yeah. Right. And mm -hmm. if, and if yeah. I approach, and if you approach me with suspicion, right. Yeah. It, it, it creates, it automatically creates like a, just yeah. like an, a vibe that like we, we aren't going to jive. Right. So let's, let's try to be on the same page of trust and all that kind of stuff. And it was just this constant feeling with this company yeah. that something wasn't right. Yeah. Something wasn't right. And w and the delays kept coming and things kept happening. And I kept seeing pictures of stuff and I was like, you know, I'm not a mechanic. I'm not, I don't build cars, but something doesn't seem right about this. Yeah. So we finally took delivery of this. Yep. November fourth. One full mm -hmm. year later. November fourth, mm -hmm. 2020. Yeah. So when we take delivery. Yeah. And it comes out of the container. We're looking at it. And I'm filming it with one of these very cameras. Is sitting here filming this. I'm filming it, and Jessica is filming me with her phone. This is this, this is, is delivered as a completely rebuilt new truck ready to overland ready the world. to overland the yeah. world that's how it and, delivered. and i'm sitting there pointing the camera at the port jessica's filming me and i say i can't believe this actually happened it doesn't even seem real they pull it out we start loading it and they're getting ready to close up shop at the port so we got it we got to get out of, out of the yeah. gate i fire up the truck the timing belt light is on and i'm like what i put it in first gear and it's like just like just a grinding noise in the first gear. And I know how to drive a stick shift, all right? <laughs> this wasn't user error. And I hit the accelerator to move well, out. And I am I have a walkie-talkie. Jessica's in a, in a rental car. I have a walkie-talkie. I come over to the walkie-talkie. I say, this truck feels like shit. A year and a half and $54,000 later, Yeah. you're sitting in, in what, what, what has come of it. Like... Well, you're sitting in a great world traveling overland race Absolutely. after that journey. Absolutely. That, that you guys went through. Yeah. This this truck is it is the dream vehicle. And if you <laughs> if you go if you go to our blog and you read about our synchro, there's an article that we wrote about our we, that we wrote about like traveling, you know, the yeah. planet and, and a type of rig or whatever. And there's one of the last paragraphs I say, the Vanagon is great, but wouldn't it be great if you had one of these? And then there's a list of three pictures. And it's pretty much these German built <clears throat> mm -hmm. land cruisers. That's the dream. That's what we'd been dreaming about. Somehow, through some crazy convoluted meandering mm -hmm. road, yep. we wound up at our dream. Right. It wasn't easy. Right. It wasn't easy. It, it was wasn't, it wasn't cheap. And and really e and I and when I say easy, it was uh like soul crushingly difficult to to keep going to keep right to keep motivating ourselves to say this is worth it to spend all this time and all this money and not, and, and remember the money isn't just money that grows on trees because there's time that goes into working to earn that money right. every hour of our work yep to this go ahead jessica go ahead so yeah. all the money yeah and and uh, all the money all the time and all the heartache uh it really challenges you in ways that you don't expect because it has nothing to do with the vehicle. No. It has to do with facing adversity and facing challenges mm -hmm. and seeing how you're going to come out of that on the other side. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, for us, I think that that's, it's actually what we needed, right? Personal growth wise. Mm -hmm. We're in a very different place now than when we started this journey with this whole situation. 
And, um, and yes, like if someone was to ask, I would say, absolutely. I would not recommend, uh, working with this company, take inspiration from how they've approached certain things, but the company itself is just not, is not a reliable partner to engage with. Right. right? But if you want to grow personally, <laughs> and, and spiritually and emotionally and come all to this, terms with yeah come to terms with yourself and have an awakening <laughs> maybe maybe bring it it be might my, be right be for my some people. guest yeah do it do it up <laughs> the generosity kindness love affection and and true humanity that we experience from other folks is commensurate with the negativity right. and awfulness of what we experience on the flip side right and without that we don't get this other thing right Ultimately, ultimately, some something good comes of all of this stuff. Right. You know. Right. And we've got so, a we've we've got a good cautionary tale for people, yeah. right? Who might be aspiring to do what you guys are about to embark on. There's a good cautionary tale. Maybe we can save some grief. Um, but at the end of the day, like you're saying, you know, at the end of the, at the, at the end of the day, you're we're we're here. We're sitting in this truck. <clears throat> runs like a freaking tank right yeah. i mean it runs awesome um yeah. it's it's built and and uh it's where it's right now where you want it to it's be where we want right it to be yeah. where we want it to be and we know it top to bottom front to back because you had every bolt across kevin's uh, garage <laughs> yes. and you had your manuals and you were putting it together piece by piece yeah, yeah. right i yeah. mean and yeah we had, and we had you know <laughs> call, calling people on the phone saying so what is this little piece of here? <laughs> what is you know like and, and yeah we had a lot of, we had a lot of help for all the grief that we had with the drivetrain the interior is stunning Mm -hmm. The way they laid this out is beautiful, unbelievably uh, functional, and like gorgeous. I every time I come into this mm -hmm. space, I feel like they should build shells. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know what? That, that is what they should they, do. You know what? If that's what they did, I, I would I would be fan numero uno. Well, yep. maybe not numero uno, but <laughs> but you know, you could you could all, you could almost get to the point of like oh. You might go to them for a shell. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Might. But yeah. but we're here. And the, tr and the truck is... It's, it's gorgeous. It's staggering. Yeah. 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 It's great. Um, you guys are about to embark on an awesome journey. Um, uh, let's talk about what you're about to do. Tell us what we're in. Sure. Tell us... Just give us some nerd stats yeah. on what we're in. And then tell us what you guys are about to sure. do. So, so you yeah. want me to take the nerd stats and you take the what we're about to do? Sure. All right. So we're sitting in what is essentially an 80 series mm -hmm. truck that has been extended by 400 millimeters. I think that's 15 inches. So the, so the wheelbase has ex been extended 15 inches in order mm -hmm. to accommodate a larger shell. The shell is made from carbon fiber. The front of the truck looks like a 70. Well, it is a 70 series. Like So mm -hmm. everybody thinks that this is a 70 series, but it's a 70 series. Uh, Saudi spec 70 series uh, cockpit mm -hmm. on an 80 series chassis running 80 series or European 80 series spec. So it's an HDJ 80. So we have a 1 HDT engine in this, which is a six straight six turbo diesel. We've upgraded the turbo to a, a green wheel turbo from G Turbo in Australia. Makes uh, a plenty of power. We could actually make a hell of a lot more power, but we aren't trying to race. We aren't trying to race to South America. Um, it's been intercooled. Um, we've added. We've we've had to rebuild the injector. The inject. Or I'm sorry. The injection pump. The injection pump is functioning perfectly, beautifully. We've got new. Um, we've got new injectors. We've rebuilt the entire engine. It's running an H151 uh, F gearbox, which is the heavy-duty version of the of the uh, of the gearbox that came in the HDJ 80s. Mm -hmm. Extremely, extremely strong um, transmission. Uh, it's got a full-time four-wheel drive. I think it's trans transfer case, right? So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm starting. I'm starting to get to the uh, limit of my nerdness here. Mm -hmm. So full-time full four-wheel drive. Uh, sitting on 35 inch tires yep. um, below below deck we've got 35 gallons of fuel we've got 62 I'm sorry 35 gallons of water mm -hmm. 62 gallons of fuel with, which gives us a range of about 900 miles we get <laughs> roughly between 16 and say right yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't have to we don't have to stop at a lot of gas stations what I'm trying to say Great. <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and and she pulls like a horse I mean yep. she pulls 
It's right unreal, on. man. It's yeah. a, the work that Torfab did in Seattle. You want to know some guys uh -huh. that know what they're doing and are really great guys to work with. The work that they did, they, they, they did to dial this thing in after Jessica and I put the engine together and got everything kind of you know working. Absolutely, tor just, fab. yeah, tor, just yeah, just great. unbelievable work, unbelievable work, and the and the transmission, like you said earlier, was rebuilt by some friends nearby, like uh, the guys at Valley Hybrids, right? Yeah, great George work. at Valley Hybrids, George, yeah, yeah. and his group. Um, Great guys. Uh, the hood is the hood is fiberglass, so it's really mm -hmm. light. Um, what 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 else am I missing, Jessica? We've got storage all over this truck. The, the truck at fully and inside and out. The truck fully loaded comes in at 8,200 pounds, but it doesn't feel like 8,200 pounds. Yeah. And, yeah, and we don't, and obviously that's fully, fully loaded. So. That's full that's expedition not, weight, if you want yeah. to call it that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah. full water tanks, full fuel tanks, full everything, everything. But mm -hmm. we you don't know. need full fuel tanks, you know, right. terribly often. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we try to do, do that uh, strategically. Uh, mm -hmm. If we know, um, obviously, if we're not going to have access to fuel, but also um, if we can get cheaper fuel in one place. Yeah, that's an investment when you're filling yeah. up that kind of a yeah. uh, fuel tank, for yeah. sure. Yeah. We've got Shieldman seats up front, which I got to tell you, I was skeptical. I was skeptical about paying that much money for new seats. Yep. I ain't skeptical no more. How's your booty? Dude, I got to <laughs> tell you, because these Land Cruisers do not come with comfortable seats. No, they do not. <laughs> right. And no, these not. are stunningly good. Um, really good seats. It's, it's just very comfortable up there. We've, yeah. we've, we've adjusted the cockpit to be... Sort more of this, functional. yeah, yeah, way more functional. We put a, a, a an upper uh, a console, console on the on the ceiling uh -huh. for extra storage and, and there, also like better lighting up there mm -hmm. um, for when we're in the vehicle at night. Yeah. You guys have defined the layout of of each component on the inside of the of the, the, the cab as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and back here the yeah. living space yeah. as well. For folks watching, this this could be um, seen as fairly aspirational, right? You guys have been planning this for a long time. Yeah. What do you guys? What is, what's your plan from here? What are you guys going to do? Uh, so the plan from directly from here is we're going right to start here, yeah. journeying south, and uh, it, we're going to hit up Baja first. Mm -hmm. um, that's a place that we really love, and we've been a few times now, and um, kind of getting our feet wet there. Mm -hmm. And then getting from, back into what it feels to do this sort of overlanding, right? Like yeah. what is what you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the border crossing sort of new culture thing, like ease in. Ease yeah, in. Cause Baja's yeah. familiar to us. It's, it's, it's right. familiar, but it's, um, yeah, just kind of getting, getting out there, getting started. And then from there we'll ferry to mainland Mexico, um, travel around. So we will hopefully have about six months, um, in Mexico. That's generally what us citizens get. So, um, a couple of months in Baja and then the rest of our time, traveling on in the mainland. on the mainland right and then from there we hope to continue on south so you know, into central america into central america mm -hmm. guatemala and on um and then on to south america as long as we're still inspired to do it and um you know, and conditions and you know the mm -hmm. uh, border conditions remain you know roughly open enough for us mm -hmm. to be able to engage in this right. sort of travel um and the goal you know really the the long-term goal um, you know, best laid plans and all that aside, <laughs> right? But the long-term goal is to be in South America for five to six years. Well, I'm speaking locally, personally, but also for folks that are that are that are watching. You guys did a great talk with local Overland Bound members today about you know some of the details around what you guys have planned, what you you know the details about you know how you are going to live some of the logistics about paperwork and you guys are amassing this knowledge uh, for yourself will you be in contact in any way for people to ask you questions or you know reach out and say hey i love your story i would love to do something like that can you give right. me some advice right. things of that nature will you be absolutely. available yeah, absolutely you know as you know we don't really we're not really on the major social media platforms yeah, much congratulations. anymore um yeah we're still trying to figure out what we want to do with youtube because it because it is different you know but yeah we want to hear from people uh -huh. Like I want to hear from you, not as filtered through a platform that's distracting you. I want to hear yeah. from you, and I want to yeah. talk to you. The things that we have together, these, these, yeah. this is what this is what's real. I want I want to extract myself from this thing, and be exist in meet space, right? Yeah. Send me an email, and if we can meet up with you, let's meet up. And if you have questions, man, 
I'm happy. We're happy to answer questions yeah. to to an extent, right? Like, don't send us like a five thousand word email with. Please like, figure it out for me. Yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> figure it out for me. But yeah. but we are happy to point you in the direction, you know, yeah. and to try to and to help you figure it out because we wouldn't be here without people willing to answer our questions. Right. Yes, and right. I also want to say too that we do have a website, mm -hmm. and um, we are going to be shifting our focus from, uh, like he said, not posting on social media anymore, but yeah. but. Pulling together stories, you know, that we encounter along the way, giving updates and things like that through our newsletter. Right. Um, it's not something that's going to be like on a regularly scheduled basis right. or anything like that. It'll be as there is something to share, mm -hmm. right. or as we make updates on the website, or as we, you know, we we're both designers and um, like creating things. So occasionally we create new merch items, so we'll share those things mm -hmm. through our newsletter and through our website. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there are already a number of articles um, or blog posts up on the website that do have some information on some of these things. So I would encourage people to go there. You don't have a, we're going to go there and then we're going to come back date. It's like, we're going to go there. It will probably be a number of years and we'll see what happens as it, as it comes. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. that's really our approach. And that's, that's kind of always been our approach to this this whole thing you know mm -hmm. before i mentioned when, when we first hit the road we we're like oh, i guess it'll be a year but we didn't really have a specific target in mind and then a year came and went and it was just like this is not nearly enough time you right. know there's so much to see the more you're out the more you see kind of like the more you learn the less you realize you don't know or right. the more you realize how much you don't know yes yeah you got it yeah yeah i don't know if it's well that yeah whatever. that whole thing but, but yeah. you, and it's kind of the same with, with travel for us. It's just like the more you see, the more you realize there's so much more to see. And it's not that we have to see all of it, mm -hmm. um, but that there is just this desire um, to experience as much as we can in a way that's sustainable for us. Right. You know, as individuals and together. And um, so, so we'll, we'll just kind of see how it goes. And especially after this experience of this whole situation with the truck and the waiting and the starts and the stops and the starts and the stops. Um, yeah, I think it's got us both in a in a headspace where I'm I'm happy I'm happy that we're here right, right now right talking now. to you. Right. Talking this to is you. it. Right. That our truck is working yeah. is awesome. Yeah, and it's like that is, that is enough in and of itself. Mm -hmm. if, so if, we'll see what happens next. If the universe yeah. swallowed us up right now and said you're not going to South America, I'd be like, cool. You know what? This was great. This was great. We got this Ma far. Get managed. Yeah. I we got this far. And tomorrow, wherever we end up, we got that far. Mm -hmm. Because I, as we learned over the last six years, the harder we push to try to make it happen, the further away it seemed to get. Mm -hmm. And the moment that we decided this is one bolt at a time, one day at a time, mm -hmm. suddenly everything started to fall into place. Mm 